What's up guys, it's Blaze from Funbox here and this video is actually a catch-up video or a follow-up video to my 2D arrays tutorial that I made before this one, sometime before this one. And in that video we had a very brief look at accessors. Um, and you know what, quality-wise I think my answer for, my explanation for accessors in that video was a bit, it's a bit light. So what I want to do for this one is I want to take you guys through a little bit more detailed of what array accessors are. And where there are other accessors for lists, grids, and maps as well, um, but we're solely looking at array accessors and the functionality that they have. Accessors for arrays allow us to take an array entry and change it directly. Right. It allows us to modify it, or I don't think we can delete it, but we can modify the array entry with a function or a method um, without making a copy of it. So in our little example today, it's going to be a very small example, is when we, I already kind of set it up before, is when we press the uh, keyboard, when we press the space key, we are going to change our idle animation. So let's quickly fill that in now so we don't have to go back to it. All right, so I filled that in. And like I said earlier, an array accessor allows us to take an array entry and change it directly. It won't make a copy. It essentially skips passing it in by reference, meaning that instead of it creating a temporary copy and then returning it as an array, into this original spot, it just takes this whole thing as it is and changes it directly. So no copy pasting needed, basically, right? And the way we do that, if I center this, is we just use the array name itself. So for us, it was animation. And then inside the square brackets, remember, we're working with a 2D array here. Inside the square brackets, we take our array accessor, which is an at mark or an at symbol and then the name of the position that we want to change so in our case it will be none idle that's it that's really that's how we set up an accessor obviously we want to put in the value that we want to change it to and so let's change it to one of our attack animations because that makes sense to change it to that Okay, so like I said before, we're not going to see much of a performance improvement here, but basically if we were to skip using accessors like this, it would take a little bit more work. It would, actually, it'll take a lot more work than say using accessors. Basically, accessors allow us to write less code, but it also gives the CPU less work to do. So in that, it's very useful. Uh, and depending on your data size or how much data you're working with, it can give you guys a massive boost for in terms of performance. All right, so we've basically written this out. Where else can we use an accessor or an array accessor? What else is it useful for? Well, the cool thing about using array accessors is, let's say you have an array and inside that array, you have a list. You can basically do something like this, right? Now, we don't have a list of animations that we can put in, but basically, we can combine different accessors together, which again, allows us to write less code. And so let's say, for example, our animations were all in a list and we wanted to get that information. Basically, if I go up here, let's say, like I said before, let's say our attack animations or our animations in general we're all in a list here. You can do this and it would work. This would work. Um, but of course you have to have that list in place before you can do that. Uh, this will still work of course, because it is an array entry. However, in our case, when you're just reading an array, this is fine. This is fine. It will still read it. However, because our project is so small and so controlled, um, we won't see a difference in terms of using an accessor or not. That will be something that you guys will have to test out on your own. Is it worth it to use an accessor? Generally, if you are setting, if you're modifying information, 
yes, using accessors will definitely give you a performance boost. And yeah, in the grand scheme of things, it will. However, when it comes to reading an array position, will using an accessor improve your performance, your game's performance or not? That's something you'll have to check for yourself. But knowing that it exists and that you can use it should be enough to get you guys curious enough to see if it does work. Okay, so like I said before, we can combine a whole bunch of different accessors. Let's say, for example, I want to center this. Let's say, for example, we had an array that had inside of it a list and inside that list there was a map. You can basically have something like this. Right, so this will this will work in theory because we have these chained accessors. If you didn't, if you were to use chained accessors in this way, you would have to pass the array through a function and then the list through another function, and it would just be a nightmare to go through. Using chained accessors in this way allows us to skip all that extra code, and we can essentially read or write the value that we want to change, which makes it very useful. Okay, so that about wraps up uh, our accessors video. I'm, I'm not sure how long I'll, this video actually is. It, it is pre-editing after all. So I'm going to try and drill it down to a, a, as short a video as I can. I'm getting a lot of no notifications from um, my other PC, so I better get onto those right away. Um, let's wrap it up here. Accessors, useful for if you are trying to change a lot of data especially if you're changing array data like this because you're not copying and pasting array entries, which is less work for the CPU. Now, like I said before, is it useful for reading array entries? I'm not sure. That's completely up to you guys, and that's for you guys to test out to see if it works. Um, but I can guarantee you that if you're modifying array entries like this line up here, then you will see a, an increase in performance. Anyway, that's all from me. I hope you guys learned something. And the next video is going to be networking. Then it's I'm going to break it up into several videos because I don't think I can do it all in one go. Anyway, that's all from me, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.